even though we're almost a year uh, into what you could say the biggest uh, segment of the Israel, Iran, Israel, Palestinian war that we're witnessing almost October 7th, uh, on the time of recording, we're one week away. We've witnessed this week a uh, huge situation uh, unfolding in the Middle East. Iran uh, launching more than 180 rockets into Israel. Uh, we've seen the U.S. also uh, intercept some of the rockets. Some of the rockets did fall. But I would like to hear your first thoughts into all of this situation that has unfolded. Uh, what did you see and how does this change the whole situation in the Middle East between Israel and Iran? Just going to need to say this is the morning of October 2nd. So the situation is pretty fluid, fluid so things can change. Uh, I think we have to see everything that's happening in the context of uh, the post-October 7 uh, situation. So after October 7, I think uh, Israel managed to release itself partially from the shackles that had been put on Israel by the West, mostly by the United States. So for many years, Israel really did not respond forcefully uh, to what the Islamic regime in Iran and its proxies have been doing every time Israel tried to uh, go after these proxies. There has been pressure from outside, uh, mainly from the U.S., and it was bipartisan, like Bush did it, Obama did it. And this, this proxies actually managed to become stronger and stronger. So in the post-October 7, the situation has changed to a certain degree. So Israel has decimated Hamas to a good degree. That's what it seems. It doesn't mean Hamas, Hamas has been destroyed. It means that in the short term, Hamas does not have the capacity that it had. Then you had the April event when Tehran uh, launched uh, hundreds of missiles and drones into Israel. And the lesson we learned from that is, was that actually Tehran's missile program really didn't work very well. So it didn't, the deterrence that Tehran thought it had and everyone else thought it had really didn't work. And then Israel managed to target a high value strategic uh, target deep inside the Iranian soil. So that showed that Iran actually doesn't have a good uh, air defense either. Then we had uh, this Hezbollah thing. So for a week, Israel managed to decapitate Hezbollah. The leadership is gone. And before that, through the pager operation, it managed to <clears throat> weaken Hezbollah. We can assume that those who had the pagers were the elite force of the Hezbollah, were the top people at the, the the middle rank, but the top people in the middle rank. And Hezbollah really didn't manage to respond, respond in, a, in any effective way. And Hezbollah is basically Iran's uh, defense against an Israeli attack deep into the Iranian soil. So the missile defense, the missile program that Iran had doesn't work. Their air defense, air defense doesn't work. Hezbollah doesn't work. Hamas is mostly gone. So they had to do something. There was tons of pressure from their proxies from within the rank. And they felt also that they lost the deterrence. So this time, I think this, these were the best probably they could do. We have to still wait, you know, missile the expert. Tell us, I have a good friend, Ben Ben Talebdo, who is really one of the best missile experts. So they will tell us what was uh, launched into Israel. But uh, based on what we saw so far, is that these were much more sophisticated than the previous one. These were ballistic missile, so the time to react was uh, lower. And still, it seems that they really didn't do any the strategic damage 
So maybe they hit here and there, you know, this building or that building, but it doesn't seem they managed to target any strategic target. So the deterrence.